Today I have a few subjects that are too short for a video by themselves that I'm pulling together into random thoughts. Welcome to another episode. In this episode, I have three subjects that all apply to my Haas machine. The first one is the uh, USB thumb drive and some things I've learned about that. There are limitations on this machine that mean that I cannot buy a thumb drive for the most part and just be able to use it. There are a few extra steps required because this machine is now an 11 year old machine. The next topic is related to my, my face mail which I will show you in a little bit, and the inserts that I was using. One of my viewers pointed out I was using the wrong inserts. I needed to learn a few things about inserts, and now I have some inserts that are designed specifically for aluminum. The final thing is I wanted to find out the repeatability of this machine. In other words, if I power the machine back off and then back on, and then do a power-up restart where it's using the, the homing to home all three axes, how repeatable is that? How close will it be to where it was when I left off? So let's get started. This is how I get the programs to my CNC machine from the computer. But one of the interesting things about dealing with uh, older machines, and my machine is a 2009 machine, is technology has changed a lot since then. So the Haas OM2 that I have has a limitation of two gigabytes max. Uh, for a thumb drive. It can't read anything larger than that. It has to use a format that's known as FAT, F-A-T, instead of FAT32. So I bought these really cheap thumb drives, which were two gigabyte thumb drives off eBay. The problem I have with these is after a little while they stop working. So what I did is I bought some higher quality thumb drives. Uh, talking to Haas, this is the brand that they suggest, SanDisk. The problem though is these are 32 gigabytes. So if I put this into my machine, it's not visible to the machine. So what I'm gonna do is show you how I take this and prepare it to get it ready for the machine so that it works just fine. I haven't used the one that I have in the machine long enough to know whether or not it's going to have the same reliability problems as these but I'm certainly uh, hopeful that you know, the quality of these will be better and last longer. First, I'm going to insert the thumb drive. And it shows up as drive E on my machine. If we take a look at this, you can see it's FAT32. Now, if I try to format this, because I need FAT instead of FAT32, you can see that FAT is not an option. So here's the way to get around that. First, I go here and I type in disk and then I want to select Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions. This will show all of my disks, and the particular one I'm looking at is drive E, which is right here. And you can see this as the FAT32 partition. I'm going to delete that volume, and then I'm going to create a new simple volume. For some reason that doesn't always work the first time. Now if you go with defaults, again, you can see there's no FAT, just FAT32. If I go back and I change this to 4000, which seems to be the maximum allowed for FAT32, I mean for FAT, you can see FAT is now an option. So I can go ahead and set, select FAT. Oh, I see, I get this warning. So I'm just going to go back and change this so it's uh, 2 gigabytes, so that's 2047 I'm going to do do FAT, and now I'll have a 2 gig gigabyte volume on my USB stick, and now I can use that USB stick in my Haas without any problems. And 2 gigabytes is more than enough space uh, for what I need to be able to do, which is just to take uh, the CAM programs from my computer and take them out to my shop and put them onto the Haas. This is the, the, the face mill that I've been using on my Haas. This is the largest face mill that I could fit into the machine. Uh, it's in an ER20 collet holder, so I was limited to a half inch diameter shank. Uh, this is made by Bush. I'll try to put a link uh, down below. 
And the inserts that came with it are TPGB inserts that don't have the right profile for aluminum. So I ordered some new inserts from McMaster that I'm going to install. And these are TCMT inserts. And I'll explain what that means uh, in a minute. But the first thing I'm going to do is install these. Which is pretty easy to do. And one of my viewers is uh, the one who pointed out that these were the wrong, the ones that I was using before were the wrong inserts for aluminum. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that these were tight enough so that they wouldn't chatter. And now I'm ready to put this back into the mill. Once I do that, I'll explain what I learned about the nomenclature for the inserts. Now the uh, spindle can rotate, of course. So what that means is when I put this in here, yeah, this could be in any uh, orientation. One of the things I discovered about this holder is that it needs to be in this orientation to put into the tool holder. So if I, on the machine set uh, orient spindle, uh, this is actually not the right orientation. So I'll pull it out. Oops. And then I'll put it back in with the correct orientation. And now what that means is I can put it back into the uh, tool changer and there are no problems with it going in and out. I ordered these inserts, which you can see are TCMT 21.52. And it took me a little while to figure out what that meant. These numbers here basically are ANSI numbers. Uh, the first three, the first four are pretty much the same across the, the board. I found this nice chart on Little Machine Shop that helps explain it. So the, the T says it's triangular. The C, which is the next letter, says it's a 70 degree. It's hard to see, but it says 7 degrees for the, the, uh, the clearance angle. The M is the tolerance. And then the final T is what the hole looks like for holding it into place. Then we get to the interesting part. So it's 21 point, let's see, what did I say? Uh, 21.52. So the first two says it's a quarter inch for the size of the hole. And then the next one is actually 1.5, which is 3 32nds of an inch. And then the final two is the radius, which says it's 1 32nd of an inch. And you can see that matches. So it's a thickness of 3 seconds, and the tip radius is 1 32nd of an inch. When I first got this machine, uh, one of the things that I would do every time is I would set the X, Y, as well as Z offsets. Because I, from my previous experience, I didn't really have experience with a machine that had high accuracy. And this machine is certainly high accuracy. So one of the questions I had is how repeatable would it be when I powered it off, turned it back on, and just homed it? Would it come back to the same position? And if so, how close would it be? So let's take a look and see what the answer is. I have my Heimer in here. What I'm going to do is pick up the, the uh, X, Y, and Z positions for this part basically at the back left. And then I'm going to look at the machine coordinates on the screen and record those. So I'll start out with uh, the X direction. Set this to zero. And then I'm going to switch to one ten thousandth of an inch and get in that last little bit. And you have, may have some parallax, but it's pretty much on zero. So let's take a look at uh, what it says on the screen and then I'm gonna record that. So on the screen, you can see we have the X position here, the machine position for X, which is 9.5695. I'm going to press the offset key and then move down and then move down to this position here. And when I press part set zero, you can see that this position 9.5695 is now there. So I'm going to do the same thing for the X, Y, and Z, and then I'll come back. Uh, 
Okay, so now I've got the y in there, 2.1950, and then I'll do z. All right, and you can see that I've got all three numbers in there. Those three numbers will persist uh, between resets. Now I need to take the Heimer out uh, before I do a reset so that it doesn't get put in the tool holder. So I'm going to raise the Z and then do uh, tool release and I'll put the normal tool back in. Now the first thing I'm going to do is just a, a power up reset and then the next thing I'll do is I'll well, the power up reset is pretty much exactly the same as doing a power up. So I'll just do a power up reset. Um, let's see, I'm not sure why. It, oh, wait, the door is open. There was a message right here that told me what the issue was. Power up reset. Okay, so it homed uh, X, Y, and Z. So let me. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, so I'm going to put the Heimer back in. And then pick up the X, Y, and Z position again and see how close we are. So first I'll go to uh, X0. And then getting close and then switching to one ten thousandth of an inch. And then I look closely with just one eye until it's exactly where I want. Okay, so on the offset, what I had before is 9.5695. And the current machine position after using the Heimer the second time after a power on reset is 9.5695. The exact same thing. Let's try it on X and uh, see where it comes out. So I move left. All right, I've done exactly the same thing with Y, and you can see here the Y is 2.1950, and so here we're off by two tenths. And this is to show you that it's not exact, but it's pretty darn close. And you know the Heimer, it's you know people debate as to whether it's that close for measuring anyway. So that's really really good. So let me try the Z and see what we get on the Z. So I set the Z to as close as I think it was and it says uh, we're accepting 2.6222 and again we're off by about two tenths. So one of the things I was wondering is how could it possibly be that repeatable? My initial thinking is that it was using limit switches, and I wasn't convinced that limit switches were that accurate. But someone pointed out to me that it's not just using the limit switches. This machine also uses servos. Now, some types of servos have absolute position within a certain amount of rotation. So what that means is that if you combine the limit switch information with the angle of the servo, it can know very, very precisely exactly where it is. And so that means even if you do power off, power back on, power reset, etc., you will come back to the same position within at least, you know, uh, a few tenths, possibly within one tenth. I'm not really sure. The point, though, is that with this level of accuracy, it means that I can turn the machine off because this is a hobby. Sometimes it gets late in the day. I have to wait till another day when I have more hobby time. I can turn it off leave everything in place, come back later, and I'll know that the registration is exactly the way it was before, and I don't have to change anything. But the other thing it means is that for Z, as long as I have the C Z set to the top of the parallels, I don't have to re-pick up the Z before each job. I can just continue to use the top of the parallels as the zero, Z zero position for every job. So I'm absolutely thrilled learning how accurate this is and it's changed my workflow so that I'm mostly use the, using the Heimer to pick up the X and Y position and not the Z because I'm using a consistent Z position. This has been a little bit different of an episode 
I've been pretty busy at work and uh, at home I've been, during my hobby time, I've been making some injection molds that um, I'm not able to show you. So I haven't been able to produce some content recently, but I do have more content coming up soon that um, I will be able to show and I'm pretty excited about. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please give me a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, and I'll see you next time.